Welcome back to the Call on Our Shop podcast. We are live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Eastern time. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. I'm Austin. I'm joined by Logan. We're here to talk about a lot of things NFL. Man, there was a lot that happened this weekend in the sports world. But first off, Logan, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing great as ever. I mean, we had such an exciting week of playoff football. Finally, you know, something to talk about that isn't regular season football. I'm just enjoying it, right? We we have to, for football fans like myself, we have to enjoy these last few weeks of the season because soon in, in March and, and the end of February, we're going to be craving football. So we got to enjoy it while, while we have it. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's it's fascinating how fast the NFL season goes. You know, you take for granted week one and week two, and then next thing you know, week 18 and the wild card's yeah. done. We only have seven more NFL games to watch, which is ridiculous. I mean, I'm sure we'll have a ton of great games, have a ton of exciting matchups. We're going to break down, you know, kind of give our initial takeaways from each wild card matchup, and then we'll rotate into, um, obviously, all the matchups that happen next weekend, this Sunday. So there's a lot to cover, but as always, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We got to say... Thank you guys so much. 20,000 subscribers. Last wow. last uh, episode, we were kind of teasing like, yo, wouldn't it be cool if we hit 20,000? Well, you guys did it. So we appreciate it. <laughs> and I have to say something. You guys also, we hit 750 downloads of the podcast. That's my stat of the day. You guys have awesome. been crushing it. I mean, normally the podcast get a couple thousand views, but I really appreciate it if you guys go and download the podcast wherever you get your podcast. There's a link down below. It's the buzzsprout.com on our shot link. But ridiculous. 20,000? No, that's crazy. And that's why, again, I, I love doing these podcasts. It's the day of the week I look forward to the most, honestly, just because I get to sit back uh, and, and talk, you know, all sorts of sports with you. And yeah, definitely go download it. I mean, if you're if you're doing any sorts of just busy work or something, I, I can't think of anything better to listen to than calling our shot. Can you? Nope. No, exactly. no, I can't. That's, There's that's absolutely the nothing best. else. There's absolutely <laughs> nothing else. I was thinking for a second. That's why you didn't hear me talk. I was like, Nope, can't no. think of anything else. There's absolutely nothing better Boom. than listening to the call on our shop podcast. We appreciate you guys all for tuning in. Um, uh -huh. And I have my stat of the day, my second stat of the day for you guys, that Tom Brady is the only, the oldest, uh, he's older than all remaining <laughs> NFC head coaches. So we'll talk about the Buccaneers in a little bit. But yeah, we appreciate you guys all for tuning in. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We're heading to 25,000 subscribers. And we have a new, new segment this week. I'll tease it with the thing, oh, thing yeah. on the screen. Clown Nose Pick of the Week. That will be at the end of the video. It's going to be our favorite pick of the spread or over under of the week. And if it ha if it doesn't hit, we have to wear a clown nose next week's segment. So like I said, we're trying to bring some new segments to you guys, and we appreciate you guys all for tuning in. But let's, without further ado, let's, let's hop into the games. We're going to start with the first game we saw on the weekend, Bengals versus the Raiders. And so, Logan, I know uh, on the podcast you came in, you were toting your <laughs> Raiders bandwagon. I was joining the Bengals, and I flip-flopped for my spread pick, and – yeah, I guess. I mean, what what did we get? We got a good game, at least. So I can't complain, but I want to hear your takeaways first. Yeah, first of all, you annoyed me a lot. I, and I have to I'm tell sorry. you this. You I'm sorry. Yeah. Privately, yeah. privately, I was so mad when I saw your spreads uh, video come out because I'm like, why did you have to come right on my Raiders? I was like, stay, stay off. Because, you know, the rule is when Austin and I agree on a bet, it's an automatic L. It doesn't matter, you know, how what the odds are. It doesn't matter how good I'm feeling when Austin's with me. It's an L. You just don't want that to happen. But truthfully, you know what, Bengals? Can you take me back, please? I I, I jumped off the Bengals for, <laughs> for a week just, just because I thought the Raiders were enticing with points. But watching that game, it was a really good game, entertaining all throughout. And you know what? The, this this game was 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 pretty much a to me a premiere of of two teams that have really bright futures, right? You know, the Raiders are going in the right direction despite all the turmoil. So they they really did put up a good fight, right? There was that questionable call. Did the whistle blow? Was you know was Joe Burrow you know oh, tiptoeing on on the out of bounds? If you don't know the play, it was controversial, and I mean it kind of did turn the tide of that game. But the Bengals give them all the credit. They they got it done. First playoff win in how many years? I, I, I don't know. 31. Yeah. Is that the right number? I think Th yeah. 31. Exactly. Yeah. Hats off to the Bengals. I shouldn't have picked against them. Yeah. You know, I don't regret taking the Raiders. We got a good game, though. I know people were kind of concerned at the beginning of the game. You know, the, Ra the Raiders weren't looking all that great, but they played decently. They had a chance mm -hmm. to tie it at the end before, you know, Derek Carr threw the interception. But got to give all the credit where credit is due to the Bengals. Proud of them for showing up, getting that big, you know, that those fans deserve that win. And so we'll talk about them in a little bit sure. as they go on and take on the Tennessee Titans in Nashville, Tennessee this week. But let's move on to the second game, which was not a game. The Patriots versus the Bills. And, man, as a Jets fan, you can see my pennant right there. Woo! Even though the Bills, you know, they're in our division, 
I'm nothing better than watching Mac Jones and the Patriots and Bill Belichick just get mollywhopped on uh on Saturday night. It was no contest from the from the opening kickoff. It was just ridiculous to see how good the Bills were and how bad the Patriots were. Now, I will say I didn't necessarily expect the Patriots to be, you know, to win the Super Bowl this year. I don't think their fans expected that either, but I think a lot of teams were a lot of people were a little bit disappointed in their defense not showing up and really playing that well. I mean, Josh Allen in the offense scored on every single possession prior to the kneel mm-hmm. down at the end. So not really what you have grown to expect from a Bill Belichick led defense, but got to give credit to where credit is due. The Bills offense looked unstoppable and their defense stepped up too, which has been stepping up all season long. Yeah, definitely. You know, some of the storylines, the cool, the coolest thing in, in these playoff matchups is when you have division rivals like the Bills and the Patriots, who've already met twice in the year, you had two different outcomes, right? The tornado game, pretty much and the, the conditions were like a tornado. And you've got the, the, the Bills asserted dominance in Foxborough. The Bills showed that that second matchup was more of the norm, right? How they, they you know, just said, you know what, New England, you're, you're such a conservative team. We're just going to come out. We're just going to blitz you. And offensively, they just blitzed the Patriots right out of there. Patriots wanted, you know, they really had no answers. And it was, you know, you bring up a good point. A Bill Belichick-led team, you just don't see him get blown out like that, especially in the playoffs. I mean, he he's a defensive mind. And then to see Josh Allen have it in his way, that was really a really shocking outcome for me. I did pick Bills in that one because I did think the offensive firepower was, was going to be too much. But Come on, man. Who's who? Who picked Bills? You know, minus twenty nine and a half. I mean, come on. <laughs> Absolutely no one. But I think no that one. might have been the only. That was the only squad ride that I think we cashed this week. And I think yeah. we both were on the Bills. We didn't have a lot of faith in a and Mac Jones and company to keep that one no. close. But man, they got it. We will talk about that Bills versus Chiefs game in a second. But that is one of the biggest games on the slate. But let's keep moving through. Go through the first game on Sunday, which was the Buccaneers versus the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Truthfully, not much like you can really take away from this game. Um, I mean, my lean in the video was I thought the Bucs would cover this one. And so mm-hmm. it wasn't a surprise to see the Eagles struggle. They hadn't beat anyone good all season long. Jalen Hurts, we'll see what the pay, or the, the Eagles do this offseason in terms of the QB position. I th- still think Jalen Hurts is has potential. I'm not going to necessarily write off his future. I know a lot of Eagles fans are like, throw this guy in the trash. But, you know, you live mm-hmm. in Philly. You know exactly how Eagles fans are. That's just yeah, how they exactly. are. But I think he still has a future. Um, but we'll see. But did you have any takeaways from this? The only takeaways I really have is that the Buccaneers need to get healthy. They need Tristan Wirfs back, mm-hmm. and they need him back in a big way. Now, you saw Keyshawn Vaughn step up. Now, you're going to yeah. need Leonard Fournette back, I think, if you're going to try to continue to move through the Super Bowl, trying to get to a back-to-back Super Bowl. But at least that offense stepped up, played well. And the other defense, while it was against the Eagles, at least held their own, you know, showed that last year's version of the defense wasn't as bad. It wasn't, you know, a big difference from this year. Yeah, no, so let's uh, – addressing the Bucks side, right? The Bucks losing Tristan Wirfs is going to be actually a really big injury because Tom Brady has, you know, he's had the the benefit of having continuity, you know, on the offensive line all year, right? A lot of teams shuffle the offensive line. He's been very comfortable. He's very well protected. Tom Brady's a statue, right? If he's, if he gets any sorts of bad offensive line play, watch out, watch out bucks. That's all I'm saying, you know, in their next matchup, which we will talk about, that could be problems down the road. Now on the Eagles side, yes, I am, you know, I live in Philadelphia, so I have a pretty good pulse on the city. And I know that they were very disappointed in that Eagles offense. I mean, come on, that's the best you could do. There was just really, really, uh, you know, they had, they couldn't get in any sort of rhythm. To be honest, the, the play calling just was was suspect the whole entire game. I was like, it's like, what's going on? And then, you know, some dumb mistakes like Jalen Rager muffing a punt. I mean, look, if, if they could parade Jalen Rager's burn jersey around the city, they would <laughs> because they absolutely hate Jalen Rager. I mean, yeah, they're always tempted. They're always thinking about what could have been if they would have picked Justin Jefferson. But you're stuck with Jalen Rager, so enjoy that. It's the the Philly the the, the Eagles ha- have to go in a different direction. I mean, we could talk about them for a long time, but it truthfully though, the Bucks did what a lot of people expected in this one. Yeah, I mean, I don't think if you're an Eagles fan, you can't really be too disappointed. I mean, I know Eagles fans. That's how they get. You know, they make the playoffs. They want to have that Nick Foles esque run into the yeah. Super Bowl. But your team just wasn't, you know, that capable this season. But you have to be at least, you know, hopeful for the future in terms of, Mm -hmm. you know, your team did end the season winning seven of their last, I think, 10 games. So not a bad end of the season. And you're right. The play calling was a little bit weird. You saw, I mean, I took Jalen Hurts under pass attempts, never had a chance because they completely abandoned the run early on in the game. And they're never going to win a game with Jalen Hurts at QB if they're abandoning the run completely. That was their DNA for the last 10 Mm -hmm. weeks. And they just said, nah, we're good. And they just threw that into the curb. Kind of like if you go back to week 18 when the 49ers came back to beat that Rams team, 
And, you know, your 49ers obviously, obviously advance in the playoffs. Next game we'll talk about. But 49ers never abandoned their run scheme. They always were like, even though they were down 17-0, they're like, well, we're still going to stick to our DNA. We're still going to run the football. Eagles completely mm-hmm. abandoned that. But let's move on to the next one. No more about the Eagles. We'll talk about the Bucks in a second. Big matchup yeah. against the Rams. Going to the 49ers and Cowboys. <laughs> Boy, were we both idiots. Yeah, no, I, 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 you know what, this was a, this was me just at, at my dumbest, right? I immediately, hey, when this both game, of us, both of us. Yeah, at our I know you and we your deserve video had Cowboys as well. I, you know what, I told some people around my work office, I, you know, they, they asked me what, what spreads I like of the week. They, they know I'm somewhat knowledgeable in the sports bank. I, mean, I, I made myself look like a fool picking <laughs> Cowboys, Cowboys minus three. I mean, that was just a no sweat bet for the 49ers, but I mean, truthfully, uh, D- Dallas, where where do we want to start with the problems? Do we want to start with Mike McCarthy and his just lack of you know coherency as as a as a head coach, not being able to you know manage clocks right? Dak Prescott going down early, right? The play that was way over analyzed was the last sixteen seconds. Or, yeah, the last fourteen seconds, right? They needed 14. sixteen. Yeah, they needed sixteen ish seconds to get a that playoff like it should have been executed. But that's just been the Cowboys all year, right? There's just something off about them that you knew, eh, I shouldn't trust them, but I was so blindly stupid. I was like, oh, you know, uh, Derek Prescott, some offensive weapons. No, you know what? At the end of the day, this was a team that ha- that uh, they have all the glitz, the glamour, the name, but that's all they are. The 49ers came out and punched them in the mouth. I love I love watching the 49ers brand of football. It's, it is actually really fun. Debo Samuel, can we, can we say enough yeah, good Debo's things about him? I mean, he's just an absolute beast. He he's ex- he's as explosive as they come. Yeah, it was. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know how to summarize it more than what you just said. I mean, we fell into the trap of the Cowboys, and that's fine. Yeah. That's that's the NFL playoffs. I should have never trusted him. Should have never yeah. trusted Mike McCarthy. There's a reason he's really struggled in the playoffs with Rodgers. Yeah, his, their their play calling, everything was just way off, and the, the team just didn't look good. You saw them really lackadaisical until the fourth quarter. They're like, oh, yeah, we're down. We need to actually score points. And they, you know, were able to manufacture some drives. But, man, they got an interesting offseason ahead of them. Uh, what will they, they do with Ezekiel Elliott? I'm not sure. I don't know what his contract situation's like. But, man, that guy, I know I got some hate for saying that he wasn't that good this year. I don't know why because I don't – Colin Spade <laughs> is bait. He was not good. It's true. It, no, it, it's it's true. I mean, as a, as an Ezekiel Elliott fantasy owner, I I can I can attest he wasn't that great this year. I mean, truthfully, when you when you're watching him and Tony Pollard on the field, one of the running backs looks more explosive, and that is Tony Pollard. One of the running backs has is more of a threat out of the backfield. Again, Tony Pollard. So why why you you got you know Ezekiel? I don't I don't know. But you know what? It it just goes back to it goes back to these teams in the playoff times they don't find their identity, right? We're going to talk about a team in the Rams, you know, in the next game that, that or in two games from now that found their identity, right? Running the football. They're like, don't, don't do too much. Well, you know what? The Cowboys, rather than relying on Ezekiel Elliott, maybe even Tony Pollard, even some short passing. How, what, what was CD Lamb's stat line, right? You couldn't get CD Lamb a few little short slant routes, a few little out routes. No, you know what? They were just being so cute with Kellen Moore. You know what? I RIP to whatever team gets Kellen Moore. I'm just going to say that if he does, if he does leave Dallas, I don't want anything to do with an offensive coordinator that just abandons your, your identity and the strength of your team. Yeah. You see CD lamb with one reception, 21 yards on five targets. And I know he had one like backwards pass kind of thing. So that was another five yards for him. But, but yeah, that, but, yeah that's just not utilizing your playmakers like you should. I mean, come on, we can, we can talk all day about Dallas, but I mean, truthfully, yeah. the San Fran was the better team and they, they got hot at the right time. They deserve to win. Kudos yeah, to the they, Niners. Yeah. Kudos to the Niners. Really. You got to, I mean, you know, Shanahan's shown that he can win in the postseason. They kind of have that bread and butter. Like we're going to run the ball. We're going to play decent defense and we're going to try to control the clock and beat you guys. And, they beat the Cowboys. It was not even – it was – I was surprised, you know, they even – I mean, the Cowboys had a chance at the end to kind of squeak it out. Granted, you know, they lost in as, as Cowboys fashion as they possibly could. But still, it's, yeah. it's it's comical. You see all the Cowboys sad fans in the stand, man. It I, I understand <laughs> it. it. It's a tough to be a Cowboys fan. So, we appreciate you guys in your uh, 19 weeks of football, but you're going to have to watch the rest of them on the on – Okay, the wait. Right? Real quick, though. CBS enjoyed those sad Cowboy fans a little Yo, too they, much. They were, they were way <laughs> – They were out – Tony Romo was doing them wrong for being a Cowboys – 
Yeah. Yeah. No, CBS was straight whack for for uh, just keep c- crowd panning to the sad Cowboys tears. I'm like, oh, man, there's some people like I was sitting on the couch actually dying laughing. I'm like, no other team do they team hunt, do they search for fans like this than the Dallas Cowboys. And and I, I know in the game before that, in the Bucks game, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck, my two least favorite commentators, you know, uh, Aikman said something stupid. Of, oh, I wish I was calling the Cowboys game. Really, Aikman? You wish you were calling that L maybe with Tony Romo? I don't know, but <laughs> that, I I just Aikman. You're right. Aikman they were really up. they were they were foul to what they did to some of those Cowboys uh, fans. And yeah. <laughs> unrelated, but dude, in that Raiders Bengals game, they had about every anti Raiders uh, stat they possibly could. Like I didn't see one negative Bengals stat, but like we're talking yeah. about the Raiders in the red zone. The Raiders, blah, blah, this, this, that. They had so many anti Raiders stats within the first five minutes of the game. I was like, what are they doing to you? But either yeah. way, let's move on from the 49ers Cowboys. We don't need to talk about them. We'll talk about the 49ers in a second. Moving on to the final game on Sunday. We got one more game, but Chiefs Steelers, very similar to the Buccaneers Eagles. Not a lot of takeaways from here. Um, just congratulations to Big Ben on probably, you know, the end of his career and probably a happy retirement to him. If he does try to play, I don't know what team would pick him up. But either way, Proud of him for, you know, a crazy career in in the in the Steelers yellow and black and yellow. And, you know, this game was about, you know, exactly as we kind of expected. The Chiefs just came out and just absolutely dominated them, setting up that rematch with the Bills uh, early, on Sunday. But still, not much I really took away from this one. Uh, the Chiefs defense looked decent, but, you know, it was Big Ben. That offense kind of stunk. Proud of Juju for coming back. Uh, what else do you want me to say about this one? Well, okay, so I don't think we need to really. Uh, Byron yeah, Pringle, just... Byron Pringle gets a shout out. I, I was actually going to shout out. I was actually going to shout out Byron Pringle because when you look at the Chiefs' offense, you know what's always been, you know, what we talk about. We always it's so it's so easy to talk about Kelsey and Hill. Well, you know what they were they were getting some production from those other players, right? And that's huge, right? Because in, in football, you know, there's 11 players on each side of the ball. No, no, no doubt about that, right? You you can you can play Tyreek Hill with a safety over top. You can you can do some sort of you know mixed coverages on Kelsey, but if you've got Byron Pringle stepping up, if you've got those players, the Miko Hardmans just making those explosive plays, the Chiefs are that that live team that you know what they started out super slow early on in the year. We were doubting their abilities. We were doubting that we're like, where's the production going to come from? Well, you know what? We we laugh at, at names like Byron Pringle, but I mean that we're actually getting some real production from them. Yeah, he played super well, and another guy that deserves a heck of a lot of praise, Jarek McKinnon. I know oh, a lot of people, exactly. you know, came in. They weren't sure exactly what the running back way, like this first round, you know, because Daryl Williams was a little bit banged up. They had raised a couple guys from the practice squad. They obviously have Derek Gore, but talk about a game for Jer- uh, Jarek McKinnon. 12 carries, 61 yards rushing, uh, averaging yeah. five, over five a carry, and then six receptions, 81 yards out of the backfield for a touchdown. A ridiculous game for him. And it's been a mm. position that the Chiefs have not had any continuity this season. You know, they've had CEH. I'm curious. I don't know if he returns for the divisional round against the Bills, but they really just haven't had that, you know, burst or someone out of the backfield that, you know, gives them that spark. And Jarek McKinnon, out of all people, I mean, we know Jarek McKinnon, super talented, super good yeah. with the Vikings, uh, just whatever, five years ago. And then he went to the 49ers, felt like he was injured every single year. And now he's fine, kind of on a home with the Kansas City Chiefs. And he could be, he's playing that James White role, if you will. Exactly. And this is and this is why this is why we know the Chiefs are finally back into that Chiefs type form, because, you know, you know, in years past, it didn't matter who they elevated at running back. They they produced they in that offense and then in that scheme, you know, slap whatever name you want on the jersey. And they have big games like we saw with Jarek McKinnon. And that and that's more of what the Chiefs way is. Right. You know, it doesn't matter where you're getting production from even a Chiefs running back in that system is is producing. And I think. Look, they, they put the league on notice, right? You know, players like Derek McKinnon stepping up and, you know, they, they are deep at running back. It, I don't necessarily think they have to have brushed CEH back, right? I mean, the, the Chiefs are live. I'm I'm super excited for their, for their showdown uh, this week. Yeah, we'll talk about them more in a little bit. Now let's move on to the last play, uh, last yep. game of the slate. And I believe I owe you something because um, – Yes, you do. <laughs> Rams, Cardinals. Rams 31, Cardinals 11, Monday Night Football. I said the Cardinals would keep it close, potentially win this one outright. And I said I I bet the clown knows. I, we did, we started the segment that we'll talk about at the end of the video, and I didn't necessarily you know say they were my lock of the week, but man, 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 did they look bad? And I got a stat for you, and I'm gonna switch the this card at the bottom of the screen for all our live viewers. This has been Cliff Kingsbury had has head coach <laughs> since 2019. This is they started they 2019 since as a head coach, you know how they started and ended the season. 
2019, they started three and three, lost seven of their last nine games. 2020 started six and three, lost five of their last seven games. And this year, 2021, they started 10 and two and lost five of their last six games. Now, my question to you, Logan, and I need to get this clown nose off so we can speed through this game if you want to. Um, what, <laughs> what, what was your takeaway? Because I have a couple takeaways from this game. And my main yeah. takeaway is that the Cardinals are exactly who we thought they were. And they've been exactly who we thought they were the last six to seven weeks of the season. Without DeAndre Hopkins, without J.J. Watt, without that leadership on their team. We've seen Kyler Murray not being the greatest leader. Granted, he's young. So we're going to give him benefit of the doubt. And we just know we just couldn't trust trust Cliff Kingsbury. Why did I trust him? Well, this is exactly why I deserve this. But yeah, what else? What other takeaways did you have? Well, I the Rams, appreciate you. credit. The Rams did look good, but Cardinals more looked terrible. On the other hand, exactly. One, I appreciate you putting on the clown nose, like like I said, because last week when you disagree with me, I was like, oh boy, I got him right where I want him. I was like, I'm gonna get him to wear a clown nose because you're so wrong for trusting the Cardinals. I called them a fraud all year. I it was so good to see them see myself validated in that Rams Cardinals game. They're so they're such a fraudulent team because I told you I don't trust Cliff Kingsbury. I appreciate you putting up that stat kind of just you know reaffirming what I've been saying. This team is just you know it's just all tricks. It, it's it's you know it's the you know high risk high reward plays that don't always pan out. And you got Kyler Murray just you know tr truly doing too much. I mean throwing the the ball a terrible throw out of his own end zone for an easy pick six. You just can't have that that type of of team you know performance especially in the playoffs. Kyler Murray played disappointing. That that Cardinals defense didn't really show up. I mean the Rams. If if we want to talk about the Rams. They just came in and they just said, we're going to run the ball and you're not going to stop it, right? They didn't ask Matt Stafford to do too much. And that's why the Rams won this game convincingly because they said, you know what? We're, our identity is run the ball, set up play action, Matt Stafford, you know, to OBJ, to, to Cooper Cup. This, this is this is why we're good, right? I, I like when teams know what works and sticks with and stuck with it. That was the Los Angeles Rams and the Cardinals had their season cut short. Because of exactly what we've been saying all year, you know, they're just they're frauds, sadly. So. Yeah, it's sad, and I, I got to take this off. I, I, yeah, yeah, the Cardinals they didn't look good, but I, what I have to do say did look good is Cam Akers. Talk about a oh, return, yeah. you know, that Achilles injury, and I think he makes this matchup against the Bucks a whole lot closer this time around. Now, no offense to Sony Michelle, or I don't really know what the heck is going on with Darrell Henderson. But they don't have what Cam Akers has. They don't have that ability to catch the ball as well, make defenders miss, and just make people look silly out there. And so, mm -hmm. man, Cam Akers gave them a new, you know, jolt to that offense. And you're right. They, Cooper Cup didn't even have a good game. Wasn't a surprise. Didn't expect him to yeah. do too well. I considered betting his under, but I knew I'd get a ton of ton of criticism on that pick. <laughs> um, but yeah, you're right. Stafford only threw 17 times. I saw I saw a guy in my comments in the Monday Night Football video. He said. Put Stafford 30 plus attempts. It's a lock. He's thrown for it every single time this season. Yeah, best thing was 17. He didn't even attempt yeah. over 20 passes. So a very, uh, you know, it was exactly the recipe for success that you need in the postseason. Some that Sean McVay had kind of been going away the last couple of weeks of the season. They weren't running the ball as much. weren't having a lot of success on the ground. They're just saying, hey Matthew Stafford, can you do everything for us? And you saw yeah. Matthew Stafford throw what eight interceptions last four weeks of the season. So man, mm -hmm. the Rams with a convincing victory. Cardinals. I'm going to need a little bit more out of Kyler Murray in terms of leadership. I think that's a key thing. Yes, mm -hmm. we know he has all the talent in the world, but I think he needs to lead this team. I mean, you see, you know, even guys like Justin Herbert or guys like Derek Carr, I'm sure they've been in the, I mean, Justin Herbert hasn't been in the league as long as Kyler, but a guy like Derek Carr has, but these quarterbacks, even though they might be younger, they lead their teams. And that's, I think a fact of something about a quarterback that doesn't get enough, you know, recognition or enough, you know, importance is how they lead a football team. And I know it might mm -hmm. sound crazy, but I think leadership comes into a big thing for, for QBs. And I think Kyler Murray has to work on that a little bit, but who am I to be a, a critic to him? I mean, he is, he's in the NFL. He was drafted first round in baseball too. So no, I, it, your point, your point is well taken because his body language is terrible. And remember, do you remember, you know, several weeks ago for the listeners that remember me talking, I said, I hate the Cardinals body language. I hate Kyler Murray coming over the sideline and just, you know, always looking at his teammates like, what, what, what are you guys doing wrong? Like he, that, that was the way Kyler Murray portrayed himself. And if you don't think leadership is big, how about look at Carolina? Look at my Carolina Panthers. Look at Cam Newton. Cam Newton stinks. He's so washed up. He, he can't do what 2015 Cam Newton did. But he's a leader, and they love playing for him. Like he, he, as soon as he came back to Carolina, 
He rallied the troops around him. And that's how big leadership is. So you know what, Kyler Murray? And they beat, take, the, Car- take, and they beat the Cardinals. They, they, they did beat the Cardinals. Sign number one that the Cardinals weren't that good. You let the Carolina Panthers beat you with Cam Newton returning. I'm back. Like, I mean, come on. I mean, th- so there's just uh, – there, there, yeah, there's a lot of red flags with the Cardinals. They got, they got, they got some, some question marks for sure. Yeah, you're right. And you're, you, a red flag is when the Panthers beat you. Another red flag is when the Jets oh. beat you because that moves on to our first game that we're going to talk about <laughs> for Sunday, the Bengals versus the Titans. The Bengals have lost to my New York Jets. Man, oh, that's yeah. on their resume. But this is one of the biggest games on Saturday, the first one that we get. Titans yeah. three-and-a-half-point favorites over under 47 points. Logan, I'm going to give you a second to kind of uh, – you know, the Bengals fans are a little bit mad. Scott, in our uh, in our comments, is a little bit disappointed that you have jumped chip on the, the yeah, Bengals. I know. I know you asked for a back. Can you kind of give some more uh, clarity yeah. and hopefully maybe maybe support them in this big-time matchup in Nashville? Bengals fans, please take me back. I mean, several weeks ago, I was pounding your Super Bowl drum saying, at the at plus 2,000 odds, why not us? Like, who day nation, right? Like, the Bengals are such a fun team to watch, such a fun team to root for. So please, Bengals, take me take me back. But in reality, the Bengals have exactly what the Titans lack. They have the the big explosive playmakers, right? You know, uh, at, at the wide receiver position, what, they go three deep. I mean, even Uzama, he's a, he's a pretty solid receiving tight end. They they can do exactly what we've been saying all year. They can just blitz the Titans. They can go up, you know, 14, 17 points real quick. And the Titans are one of those teams that do not play well from behind. So I. I I'm just so heavy on the Bengals this one. They're going to hurt me good. But Houdé Nation, please. I only see Bengals. I only see orange orange and black this week. Let's go Bengals. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you picked that one because this is a, this is a no sweat bet. This is a Titans in a route. Now maybe they won't <laughs> route them. Maybe they won't route them. But I'm picking the Titans here. And it's for a couple reasons. Number one, crown him. The King Henry is back and he should be ready to go yeah. for this matchup. And who doesn't like rooting for King Henry in the playoffs? I actually saw someone unrelated. Someone put $100,000 on King Henry to lead the playoffs in rushing yards. I think it pays out seven hundred grand. So if, I, if, the, our, if the Titans make the Super Bowl, heck, he'll probably get a good, pretty pretty good payout. But the reason I like the Titans here is because they know so many people are going to be on the Bengals. So many people. And I bet you this line shifts to three. And I bet you if the line shifts to four, it probably shows a little bit of strength in the bang, in the Titans. Because I guarantee you a lot of people are going to be like you bet and bet in the Bengals. They love Joe yeah. Burrow. They love, they love Jamar Chase. They, they love all the moxie that those guys have. And I trust me, I love them as, as much too. But I'm going to ride with the Titans here, the home team. And I know they aren't underdogs here, but I bet you they feel like underdogs. A lot of people are kind of saying they don't deserve to be the number one seed. They're looking at the Bills Chiefs across the, the pond as the AFC championship before the AFC championship. I think they got something to say, and I really like that team, that team led by Mike Vrabel. I think the defense will give Joe Burrow some problems. We've seen Joe Burrow look very solid the past five to ten weeks of the season, looking very good, you know, diamond up defenses, although he did cash his under for passing yards for us. Round of applause to Austin for that call out. Um, but, yeah. but regardless, Good I do words. like the Titans in this one. Will they cover? I'll probably wait till, towards tip off or kickoff for maybe hopefully a three line minus three. But still, I think they cover this one. I think the King will be back. And I think as long as you're right, as long as the Titans don't go down 14 points, I have faith in them, but they should have everyone back. King Henry, Julio Jones, A.J. Brown. I know they don't have a ton of chemistry together, but they've had a couple weeks to get that going. I'm riding with Ryan Tannehill. Yeah, you, you I don't said love that, Ryan, but I'm riding with him. Ryan Tannehill, you don't have a ton of faith in Ryan Tannehill. I know, I know you. Look, I, I I can take the, I can see your approach. I can I can look at why one might take Titans, and it, you know it's an attractive potentially fade the public pick. We're doing this this podcast too early to figure out where what percentages lie on what, but truthfully. I just don't want to overthink it because some of these games in the NFL, you overthought it. Like if you were taking Steelers with points, yeah, you overthought it. But I just don't want to overthink it. I want to I want to take the team that's hot, playing the best football right now. Maybe the Titans come out rusty, especially with Derrick Henry, right? You you could just plug him in and, and just assume that he's beginning of the season, Derrick Henry, uh, through like eight weeks, I, I, I believe, is before he got injured. But I mean, the, the Bengals are gelling offensively. The Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase connection – is real, right? Like it's it's an ins- it's insane how much chemistry those two have for playing in the league. <laughs> what? The, the, yeah, I mean, so weeks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So so there you go. I, I just I, I'll take I'll take Bengals in this one, and I'm glad that you're not squad riding with me on this one because then no. it would be an L. So thank you. Yeah, no, I, I'm not going to rise up. 
Yeah, I'm going to try to go against you as much as I can because I like the Titans here. I love King Henry, and we've seen them have success in the postseason in the past couple of years. I'm just rooting for him to get a little bit more success. And who, who I don't want to uh, trust me out, out of who I love both these two teams. So I won't be mad with whoever wins. I just hope we get a great game Saturday, 4 30 p.m. Eastern time. So yeah. let's move to the second Saturday game, though. It is the 49ers at the Packers. Now, this is a rematch from what? Two, three years ago? I don't remember exactly how long ago. Two, two when Jimmy G went to the Super Bowl and you forgot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, G. no, no. I, don't, <laughs> I think you got the wrong guy. Maybe that's a, a separate podcast. Um, but, yes, we got the Packers five-and-a-half-point favorites coming off their off their bye week and then the over-under 47-and-a-half points. And this, I guess, it is two years ago when the 49ers were at home that, in the, get, that day against the Packers, and it was an absolute beatdown. I remember Raheem Mostert rushing for over 200 yards it was mm-hmm. just, it was brutal. It was an ugly game. The 49ers just manhandled them. So hopefully the Packers have a little bit more in store for this one. Um, I'm curious where you're going to side though first. I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and side with the Packers just because I look, I look at this one and I'm like, you know, the Niners playing great football right now. You just beat the Cowboys. You're riding mm-hmm. high, but here they are, right? You know, it's the Saturday game. They don't get exactly a full week to prepare. You know, they're traveling across the country. This is just one of those games that I could see the 49ers coming out flat. Aaron Rodgers has had time to prepare. And, I mean, Aaron Rodgers is a man on a mission. I I think they covered the five and a half. So, you know, two field goals. Yeah, easily. Aaron Rodgers in Lambeau Field in the playoff times, usually a key to success, right? You know, barring any dumb Matt LaFleur decisions, yeah, this this seems like a Packers cover to me. I don't really want to overthink this one either. Yeah, I was afraid you'd say that Uh, because I'm with you. I'm with you on the Packers <laughs> on this one, and I hate it. I hate that we're together. I, I don't want it to be like this, but it just has to. Now, I think the yeah. key thing comes down to how healthy are Nick Bosa and Fred Warner. Now, I saw mm-hmm. positive reports about Fred Warner. I believe he said he should be back. But if either of those two guys is limited or out for this matchup, that's a big loss. We think about Fred Warner, their starting middle linebacker, probably one of the best top two, three middle linebackers in the game, yeah. great at guarding opposing tight ends, just great at you know, clocking up you know those run lanes. If he's not out there, we saw – the Cowboys marched down the field when he got injured, and they kept going. Now, the other guy, Nick Bosa, obviously one of the best pass rushers in the league. I think top five in sacks this season. An unreal pass rusher. We're going to need him out there, too, to obviously rush Aaron Rodgers. I think that's the difference here is that you're all right. Lambeau Field, it's tough to plan. Personally, I, you're, I, you're, I mean, I don't I to just copy. I'll just copy and paste what you said because, yeah, they're going to Lambeau Field. They got Aaron Rodgers, and he's on a mission. And this is a guy that I think the only team that can stop Packers is just Tom Brady, in my opinion. I just don't think the Rams have much of a chance. Um, So I'm going to ride with the Packers in this one. I think they do cover that five and a half point spread. Now, it will be interesting. The 49ers, you know, they're going to run the ball and they're going to run it often. So Mm -hmm. you're going to obviously have to stop the run. And, you know, their defense has been very, you know, I think it's been a little bit better than the Cowboys defense, but a team that has been forced in a lot of turnovers lately. And we've seen Jimmy G be a little bit careless with the ball. And you've seen Razul Douglas have that after getting caught by the, the Cardinals. Uh, had an absolute resurgence with the Packers. And so I think there'll be mm-hmm. some key playmakers that the Packers will need to make those plays. But I think Devontae Adams and um, the crew will get it done. I think they got they finally got Marquez Valdez, Scanling, Al- Alan Lazard, and all the guys kind of having some more confidence, a little pep in their step. And it's not just mm-hmm. the Devontae Adams show that it has been the past couple seasons for the Packers in the playoffs. See, I'm going to ride with you, the minus five and a half. So everyone yeah. listen in, go put your 49ers plus five and a half bets yeah, i know i know i i hate i hate when we're in agreement but you know it, that, that's the sad reality of it scheme wise i mean if, if you watch nfl football they talk about this on the telecast all the time what makes the 49ers so unique is their ability to get pressure with only rushing four if bosa is out or not himself right like he's probably going to play through an injury right you you would think so and let or you know i i think what was a concussion related neck related something yeah. something upper so. body like that so if he is able to play and he's you know somewhat of himself that's that's big for the niners but if he's just limited in any sort of way or out yeah this could be packers pretty easily i mean aaron Rodgers and Devonte adams we just talked to i just talked about the chemistry with jamar chase several weeks ago i told you i told you my my hot take of like Joe Burrow to Jamar Chase reminds me of a younger version of Aaron Rodgers to Devontae Adams. You know what? I can kind of see. I mean, they would love to be, they would love to have the chemistry that Devontae Adams has. Aaron Rodgers just looks at him. He looks at him across the line and they just know. They just know exactly what they're doing. And Devontae Adams is magically open every time. I mean, it is really cool. <laughs> it really it's, is. It's really, it's really like, fascinating to watch. It, it's it like, it's just, really, yeah. You can't even stop it. It's just what they do. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, 
it will come down. And I, I do have to give credit where, well, you know, I got to talk about the the Cowboys offensive line. I think, it, I don't think Cowboys fans, I think a lot of people still think it's that Cowboys offensive line from four or five years ago with DeMarco Murray or yeah. whatever. That offensive line wasn't that good. And I do think that the 49ers can get pressure without Nick Bosa. I do think, you know, they got Armstead and a bunch of other guys that can create pressure. But this Packers offensive line finally getting healthy. They finally, I think, got Bakhtiari back in their first, mm-hmm. you know, in the last game against the Lions of the season. And he got some playing time, came out of it injury free. So their whole offensive line, I believe, is majority back. And that's key in this sort of time in the postseason, especially against that 49ers defense. So yeah. I'll be curious to see exactly what goes down. But Packers do have, obviously, Devontae Adams, and they finally have that run game going, something they've kind of lacked the past couple of years. But the two headed monster with Aaron Jones and AJ Dillon, this is going to be an exciting game. Glad mm-hmm. we get it on Saturday. Saturday night, something to kind of kick it off. But let's move on to Sunday because we got two matchups Sunday. And man, we're going to start with the Rams Buccaneers, a rematch. The Buccaneers favorite in this one. They're at home, yeah. three point favorites, over under 48 and a half. Now, these teams match up earlier this season. It's a complete blowout. The Rams absolutely destroyed them. And that was on the road where we know the Buccaneers play a lot better at home. And so, my, I'll go first in this one. I think the Buccaneers are going to win this game. I just have a feeling that Tom Brady and company gets it done at home, but I will want to monitor the progress of Tristan Wirfs, where he's going to need to be active, like we talked about earlier. He needs to be out there because if he's not there, and you saw in the first matchup between these two teams, what was wrong? They the Rams created so much pressure against this Buccaneers front, and you saw Tom Brady kind of getting sacked a couple times. He was unraveled, on you know he just didn't look good, and I think they'll play better this week. But I think this game's going to be close. I do like what the Rams did, but. I just don't want to bet against Tom Brady. I've learned my lesson far too many times. I'll ride with the uh, the Buccaneers minus the points. Yeah, we're not we're not going to do a squad ride on this one because I I will take the Rams plus three simply because uh, yeah I, I'm going to hear the don't bet against Brady in my head just echoing through as the game goes on. But truthfully, that that worst injury could be big. The the Rams know a, after beating the Cardinals, they know what their bread and butter is, right? They know run the ball, you know, set up play action. Now, now again, against the, the Bucs run defense, yeah, the Bucs have, have a pretty good counter to, to stop that. But you know what? They're secondary, the Bucs secondary. I don't exactly trust them. I, I haven't trusted them all year. I look at that as a weak spot against their team. Yes, they're they're somewhat starting to get healthy back. But, I mean, they're going to really need Leonard Fournette in this game because, you know, Keyshawn Vaughn, you're great and all, and, and Gio Bernard, great. You know, great filling running backs. But this Rams team will absolutely gobble up those two running backs. I mean, so simply simply put, they they match up very well against the Bucs as constructed. So they need playoff Lenny. They need those those types of players. And the, with all those unknowns being being said, I'll just take the Rams plus three, hoping that they don't ask Matt Stafford to just do too much. You know, forty pass attempts, anything of that variety won't be great for my Rams pick. But I will I will pick them, and we're not squad riding on the goat Tom Brady. Yep, good. We don't want to do that because it would have been an auto L. And now I do believe Leonard Fournette. I just googled it while you were talking. He did say, I believe his birthday was uh was today. Um, if it was, um, and I'll I'll go. I believe it was his birthday today. If so, happy birthday, Leonard Fournette. But he did say in a post that he will see us on Sunday, so he should be back potentially. That's what he's saying. But uh, hopefully, he is back because they're going to need him in a big way. But yeah, I think the Rams found the recipe for success, and it is uh, the less Matthew Stafford attempts, the better. And so I think if you sure. see Matthew Stafford go over 35, 40 attempts, probably losing this game. And if he's staying mm-hmm. in the 25s, 30s, they're probably going to win this game. So <laughs> I think it does come down to, you know, the Buccaneers defense in that secondary. I mean, you're right. Secondary been bad all season long, but, you know, they look decent. I and mean, granted, it was against Jalen Hurts, so I'm not going to take much away from it. But that yeah. defensive line is going to have to control the game. And whoever wins the trenches in this one is going to win this football game, in my opinion. It's just, that's how the majority of football games go. But I think this one now more than ever, you can keep Tom Brady upright, throw into his receivers. They'll be able to win this one. But if the Rams can create pressure, it's going to be a, it's going to be an enticing game to watch Sunday at 3 p.m. There was there was a few signs and uh, of to me potential trouble for that Bucks offense. I mean, yeah, they were playing the Eagles and they had the game pretty, you know, handily. But, you know, it, didn't Tom Brady look pissed off at, I think it was Tyler Johnson for running bad routes and, and, and the drops. He's always mad at Tyler Johnson for not He's running all, he, is all, he, he always is mad at Tyler Johnson. But, like, this this is something big because Mike Evans, you know, would probably draw Jalen Ramsey or some sort of good coverage. The Rams secondary is really good. So 
they're going to need somebody to step up, whether it be a Rob Gronkowski, who's just always is open for a touchdown, I swear, especially in the playoffs. But they're going to need those Tyler Johnson, the Brashad Perriman. And do you necessarily trust them as, as much as I do? They haven't had all the time that Chris Godwin or even Antonio Brown did to build that rapport with Tom Brady. I just think that that could if, if the Bucs are going to slip up somewhere, it's going to be, you know, without Godwin and Antonio Brown. I think this is a game that we finally see that catch up to them. Again, I, I talked myself into Rams. I'm feeling pretty good about it, actually. Yeah, and that, that's my main concern is is the Jalen Ramsey shadow. Now, what I did see out of the Bucks last weekend is they knew that the Eagles had a good corner in, in Darius Slay, but they moved Mike Evans around, which was a way to get him open, get him into different spots, kind of like what the Rams do with Cooper Cup in terms of, you know, not that they're going to – they're not bringing Mike Evans out of the backfield. They, they aren't doing that, but, you know, moving him into the slot, moving him outside, inside, you know, all vice versa – and giving him some different routes to get open against different guys. Now, Jalen Ramsey, notoriously this season, hasn't been shadowing guys. Now, he'll stay mm -hmm. on his same side. And if your guy goes there, he'll be there. But I, I'd be interesting to see how they use him this week. It's going to be one of the best games on the slate. I mean, it, it is it is an absolute heavyweight bout, battle. Two of the Probably two of the top four or five teams with the biggest money on them for the Super Bowl. A lot of people want to see Stafford continue. I mean, he got his first playoff win. Congrats to him. But I think it does come down to really – you know, how good the Bucks defense plays. I mean, we know that Bucks defense is legit when it plays well. We saw them absolutely yeah. overwhelm Patrick Mahomes. And it comes down to that defense and what they can do against Matthew Stafford. If they're going to let them, if the Bucks are get Bucks give up over 24 points here, they aren't winning this game, in my opinion. I just don't see that happening. But if the mm -hmm. team can keep them in that 17-ish range, 17-21 range, I'm confident in Tom Brady and the offense to kind of get those 24, 28 points and win this game. I think it's going to be a really good one. I'm excited to watch this one. Any other takeaways before moving into the final game on the slate? No, I'm excited to see how it plays out for sure. Yeah, it's going to be one of the best games. But I think another one of the best – I mean, arguably all four of these games are awesome. It's so great <laughs> yeah. how the NFL season has panned out. But the Bills, Chiefs, a rematch of, of what we saw earlier this Ooh. season. You know, if we talk about – we talk about um, earlier this season, the really the – Bill, this first this first match between these two teams was that game where – I think it just slapped uh, slapped the Chiefs silly and slapped them back to being good. We think about, and this is an unrelated. If people don't understand. It's kind of like what UCF did to Joe Burrow in the in the uh, what was that Fiesta Bowl? We slapped uh, Joe Burrow to becoming good at football. If you know the hit by Joey Connors, an ex uh, UCF D lineman, you know what I mean. It's completely probably about one percent of people watching understand, but. The Chiefs mm -hmm. were looking terrible, and that Bills game where they got blown out, they just absolutely looked bad. And then after that, the Chiefs just flipped a switch. They won so many games in a row, but now on an absolute tear. And now this is just the collision course. Now, a lot of people expected this to be in the AFC Championship game. And, you know, it's kind of a shame it's not. But still, the Bengals and Titans deserve to be here and deserve to be on their side as well. But this is a matchup between two teams that just had their QBs throw for five touchdowns. I mean, man, what do you even do here, Logan? Well, I I wanted I wanted you to go first because I, I need to know where your head's at. And I I yes, go ahead and make your pick first. Um, so I think this will be a lower scoring game. Uh, spoiler. Um, when I look at both these two teams, now I'll talk with the Bills. Now Josh Allen, he he is uh he looked great last week, and I got him give him credit. I mean he he was awesome. Threw five touchdowns. They scored a touchdown every single drive. And the defense stepped up. And that's what exactly the bread and butter have been of the Bills the past couple seasons. They've been letting Josh Allen do everything. And then the run game, Devin Singletary, got to give him, you know, a little bit of props. He's doing pretty solid as the starting running back. You know, they kind of gave Zach Moss. It's even out there. I don't even know what's going on with Zach Moss. But either way, mm. Devin Singletary, Josh Allen, really carrying that offense. Now we look at the Chiefs side of the coin. Um, obviously, you know, we've talked about it. They got Patrick Mahomes. They got his best target, Byron Pringle. They got Travis <laughs> Kelsey. They got Tyree Kill. Nicole Hardman, Jarek McKinnon. This is a heavyweight battle. I mean, it's hard It's hard to really bet against them, but I'm going to side with the Chiefs in this one, and it's for a couple different reasons. Now, I think the Chiefs, Arrowhead, they're playing at home. That's a big, big, uh, big factor. And I know that the, the Chiefs have always kind of been that kryptonite for this Bills team, and it's been in the postseason mostly. And sure, the Bills got that emotional victory over them earlier this season. That Chiefs team, much different from the Chiefs team they will see today. The Chiefs defense is playing so much better than it has at home now their chiefs defense at, are on the road terrible i don't know what goes on on the road but at home they're really looking good and i think they'll get the win here and cover the two and a half points but if the bills win would it surprise me absolutely not but i'll ride with the chiefs yeah no not with that spread uh you know i'm kind of mad you went chiefs because i mentally picked chiefs and i can't <laughs> should i brother 
Yeah, should should I should I argue the Bills side? No, I'm gonna go ahead and pick Chiefs, and I'll tell you why. I I just think a lot of people are gonna be hung up on on how impressive Josh Allen looked last week against you know division rival Patriots. Patriots team just was wasn't as good as I think advertised. Right? They're 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 a young team, up and coming, just not their time yet. That I think this is what the Chiefs are gonna remind the Bills. It's not your time yet. It's not your time yet, Josh Allen. This is Patrick Mahomes. This is Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City in Arrowhead. They just have too many ways that they can hurt you, right? I mean, with those players like Byron Pringle stepping up with, with the Jarrett McKinnons, <laughs> how, many, how many times have we said Byron, Byron Pringle, Pringle over? Yeah, you know, I just want to pick up Byron Pringle prop on your on your channel. Please just let me do a guest pick and, and bet is over or bet an anytime touchdown because it's it's an automatic lock. But truthfully, I mean, Josh Allen and that Bill's offense, it sometimes can be a little bit of a mirage. When you, when you rely as heavily on Josh Allen's arm and explosive plays, as they have, that might get you in trouble sometimes, especially in the playoffs. I like I like what the Chiefs secondary uh, does. You know, players like Lajarius Sneed and and uh, I'm trying to think of some other DBs that they have. They have that, Mike that, Hughes. Do they have Mike yeah, Hughes? Who have Mike, Mike Hughes? They do. They do have Mike Hughes. They have. They have. Their 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 secondary has has I think been the unsung hero of that team. I mean, really, they 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 locked up the Steelers for most of that game, and and they they made that that. That Steelers offense, which hasn't been good much here, they made them look how they should. And and I think you know with with the heavyweight battle of two great offenses, what's going to give? What's going to be the, the the decisive advantage? I like the Chiefs secondary more than I like the Bills secondary, and that's why I'll, I'll take Chiefs with you. And, I mean, it's probably a close game. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be one of the best games. Awesome that it's Sunday night football, and glad they're not starting at like eight thirty. Starting at six thirty, just like the Super Bowl. And this yeah. is two of the top teams. I mean, this is what people expected these two teams to be here facing off with each other. Now, people expected this to be a trip to the Super Bowl. So we'll be curious to see how the team that wins this game shows up the next week in the championship game. Because yeah. they could lay an absolute egg next week. But I do like the Bills defense. I mean, the, the recipe for success for the se- whole season is letting Josh Allen do it and letting the Bills defense play well. And you saw Micah Hyde make a ridiculous play on Mac Jones, who mm-hmm. threw a great ball on Micah, uh, Micah Hyde just case. I know I'll be taking that. The Bills secondary is awesome, um, and they kind of stifled the Chiefs offense the first time around. But hey, we look at Andy Reid teams that you know they hadn't had a lot of success in the postseason when he was with the Eagles, but they've kind of found things like they don't show all their hands too often. And I think that's a problem with the Cardinals team. The Cardinals in under Cliff Kingsbury, they basically mm-hmm. come out the first five weeks like, here's our whole playbook. All yeah. right, that's all we got. And so every team kind of adapts. And I think the Chiefs always still have extra things up their sleeve, always different wrinkles that you aren't expecting. That's why I'm just going to ride with them. I think they have a chance to uh, go back to the AFC Championship like we've been seeing them go past the past couple of seasons. I am not. Yeah. I wouldn't be mad. Like if, if the Chiefs will lose, would I be mad? Absolutely not. It'd be cool to see another team yeah. representing the AFC in the Super Bowl. But I just think the Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes, a little bit too much. And I think maybe late they get a, a field goal at the end of the game. And you, you don't get to – you mean, in the playoffs, you really get to understand how important uh, how important f- uh, home field advantage is. And the Chiefs mm-hmm. obviously got it, and I think it's going to be a big, big difference here. The Bills are a little bit different at, well, on the road as they are at home in front of Bills Mafia. Of course. And and like I said, I mean, there's there's just players that, that step up and playing in their arrowhead. I mean, you know, you got Jones at the defensive line. You've got – this is the one I was trying to remember, Charvarius Mooney Man Ward. If you watch the Sunday Night Football intro, intro you know he calls himself Mo- uh, Mooney Man. I mean, it, it's it, they've got some really good secondary players that can that, – they could probably take away digs, right? They, that, that wouldn't be crazy to say that they could lock up – you know, do a, a pretty good job on taking away digs. Make Josh Allen a little bit uncomfortable. Josh Allen, you know, he for, for as good as he is some games – He's occasionally good for a stinker, right? You know, Patrick Mahomes, you know, hasn't had a few stinkers this year as well. But Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes, and and Josh Allen is is coming onto the scene. But is it his time yet? I say no. I don't know. This could be his coming out party, even though it he's, could. I don't it think even he's a, needs a coming out party. I mean, the guy's been absolute. I mean, borderline MVP the past two, three. He seasons, could take the but... torch. He could take the torch away from Pat in this game. That is true. This is a big, you know, career game. You know, if Patrick Mahomes yes. can take him down again, it's you know. How are you going to catch up to Patrick Mahomes? Because these are two guys that are going to be compared throughout the rest of their their careers. These two of guys course. are probably going yeah. to match up a ton in the postseason. Like we've seen, you know, we saw with Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. They always were matching up, and Tom Brady always kind of got the upper hand. But it's going to be an enticing game, and I'm looking forward to it. But without further ado, let's move on into our yeah. next segment. And then we'll give you a, a Super Bowl odds, best play, best value plays 
But it is the new segment, the Clown Knows Pick of the Week. I got my Clown Knows. I know you have one, but you might not have it on you. But like yeah. we said, this is you're going to be you're going to be giving out a pick. If it loses, you wear the Clown Knows next week on the same segment. We're going to do it throughout <laughs> the rest of the NFL season. So, yeah. do you want me to kick this one off, or do you want you? Um, yeah, I'll, you I'll keep go. this one because my picks yeah. in the game we just talked about. I'm taking the Buffalo versus uh, Bills and the Kansas City Chiefs taking the under 54 and a half points. Now, before we go into the comments. What is wrong with you, Austin? Why are you doing this? Why are you betting an under on two teams that just scored 40-plus points? That's exactly why I'm betting the under because so many people are going to be on the over. And it worked for me on Monday Night Football when everyone, like 80% of people are on the over. Nope, no chance. Rams Rams and the Cardinals, they said, no, we're good. We're going to hit the under for people out there. And I look at this matchup, and sure, I see two teams, two offenses that just absolutely had a killer showing. I mean, you saw the Bills score every single time they touched the ball. Patrick Mahomes having five passing touchdowns. But I just think these two defenses, I think the mistakes, and I think these teams might come in with a little bit of jitters. I mean, both these two teams obviously know this is one of the biggest games that they'll play in. Both those two teams, I think, were very confident they could easily smoke the other team. The Patriots, that game wasn't a mm-hmm. game after the first couple of seconds. Chiefs knew they would beat the Steelers. This is a game that's, I mean, it's a virtual pick them. The sportsbook's expected to be a close game, and I understand a lot of people are going to bet the over. That's what I'm going to say. Nope, I'm fading the public. Going with the under, it might be a sketchy pick. But I do think the defenses are good enough to step up. We've always seen the Bills defense so great all season long. I could give you to, to like 25 minutes of stats for how good that defense has been. And the Chiefs defense, very good on at home too. I just think this will be a lower scoring game than people expect. Maybe a score like 27 to 24, be 51 combined points. Wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. And so I'll be riding with the under as my clown nose pick of the week. If it loses, if it goes over this will be on my nose for next week. I, I'll be rooting for the over just because I want to see you put the nose no, on again. Yeah, what, but... do <laughs> what do I do to you? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm sick like that. But I mean, truthfully, I uh, truthfully I, I like your logic in this one a lot. I mean, I'm I'm always down for a good fade the public uh pick on this one. But yeah, it, it truthfully, when the playoff time comes, that's when that's when some of these teams with that rely on explosive plays like the Chiefs, like the Bills. Might not be getting them right. They might be both of these defenses might be saying, "All right, you're gonna have to grind this one out. It's gonna have to be the the Devin Singletary show if you want to beat us. We're not we're not getting losing the top off the defense." I, I I do like to pick a lot. I think a lot of it will come down to, and, and this might go back to just the game overall. If the Chiefs can control Josh Allen's rushing capability, I think that will be the difference here. Now, if you have Josh Allen yeah. running for sixty plus rushing yards, it's unless it's like them coming back kind of thing. If he's just doing that in the normal flow of the game. This game's over. I think the Bills win that game because he, if he can extend drives with his legs. But if you can yeah. somehow tackle him, which I know it's hard, easier said than done, I think that could be a big difference maker. But, Logan, I want you to go to your clown nose pick of the week. <laughs> I'll put it up on the screen, and you can kick it away now. Okay, so yours had yours. Your, your value might be minus one ten, might might be something. You know, we, for, I'm taking the value at Bengals money line. Pude Nation. You know, I'm so in on you guys. I might as well, I might as well just ride your money line. I don't need the points. Keep the points. Take take the three and a half. You can keep it. I won't need it. The Bengals are going to beat the Titans, and they're going to set up for a, a really good matchup in the AFC Championship game. Look, I just told you, I love their offense too much. I don't necessarily trust the Titans to play from behind, and that's what I am banking on this one. Yeah, I know, plus 170. That's not a given, right? I am going out on a limb with my clown nose pick, and I'm ready to wear it with pride if – the Bengals do lose, which I don't expect them to, right? You know what? What can go wrong in this one? You, you take take leave the points. You know, you Vegas, Vegas, the wrong team is favored here. It should be the Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> Stop laughing. It should be the Cincinnati Bengals. I, I I'm gonna get my myself a, a Joe Burrow jersey after they they go ahead and take care of the Titans like they should. I'm gonna put up a help wanted. We might need a new podcast host after this one. <laughs> um, but, but hey, in the sake of value, I'm all in. I love the value pick now. Yeah, game you're going to be wearing the clown nose because the Titans are winning that one. Hey, um, whoa, whoa, whoa. But... no, 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 Okay, fine. I will give the Bengals their credit if they do pull off the upset. I will be okay if they do. I just don't expect it to happen. But I love the value you got, and you got a lot of who's who's going to hate on Ryan with the Joe Burrow. I mean, you saw his shades. I wish I had his shades, dude. I'd yes. be like, we'd have like ten thousand views if I had those shades on. I mean, let's be yeah. honest. This is how calling our shot gets to 50k subs. We need we need like the cool the cool factor of Joe Joe Burrow. Maybe Joe Burrow could be a podcast you know guest on, but that would be really cool, right? You know he's he's got big shoes to fill in as far as special guests go. But I mean, <laughs> it's it it would it would be really fun though in all in all seriousness to see the Cincinnati Bengals win this one. 
I, yes, it's a heart pick. I know it, it, you guys, it is a heart pick, and I, I'm I'm picking them. And you know what? I'm fine with letting a little bit of money ride on the Bengals because they're here and they're hot, right? In in playoffs, why why are we why are we downplaying you know teams that are playing well at the right time? <laughs> Bengals are playing well at the right time. G- give me them all day long. Yeah, true that. I mean, if you think about it, yeah, they're they're super hot. And that would take us into our next segment, the best odds for the Super Bowl. Will you be riding with the Bengals plus 1,500? You got another uh, trick up your sleeve that you think is a good value bet. Because I know mine. I gave it out a couple weeks ago. Well, I, the, the funny thing is I already I already picked Bengals weeks ago at plus 2,000. So why would I ride them at plus 1,500? I got the, the ticket in my drawer. I'll, I'll show you it. I'll pull it out. I, I already have it printed. Um I'm, I'm looking at the list as as we're talking. You know what? I like the Rams at plus 700 just because I think, eh, they they, they j- just the value alone, right? I'm not ta- I'm not necessarily taking Packers because you know what that that just seems like too much of a square pick in this one and plus 350. It's okay, but I'll take I'll take the Rams just because if if they do sneak past the Bucks, that that will give them a lot of confidence potentially setting up a, a showdown versus Green Bay and 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 maybe a, a revenge uh, game there versus Aaron Rodgers. Okay, I can respect the value on that one. I'm going to pick a team that, I mean, I, I could I give you Titans? Yeah, but the same thing. I had the value at plus 1,200. I mean, why would I, you know, why am I taking 850? That's, that's foolish. That is foolish. That, that's the worst thing you would do here. But when I look at these teams, so we have the Titans at 850, the 49ers at 1,200, and the Bengals at 1,500. I think to myself, you know, I'm not going to take the Bills or the Chiefs. That's a complete coin toss. Um, yeah. So I'll go with the team that's going against the Rams. I'm going with the GOAT, Tom Brady. I'm going with him. Buccaneers, plus 550. <laughs> this is the best value in the world now. But look, but look, at moral of the story, they get through this game against the Rams, likely going to be in a virtual pick em with the Packers, or they'll be favored against the 49ers if they're at home. I just think I, I don't. As a Jets fan, I don't bet against Tom Brady. I'll ride with him into the grave at this rate. And so plus 550, <laughs> not too bad of a value pick. And if you can, if they win this one, you can hedge next week. But my overall best value, I would say, is the Titans. But plus 850, I got him at plus 1,200 if you were listening to the podcast a couple weeks ago. So why am I going to go with this value? You know, I mean, I feel you. I feel you. You and I gave, if if you're talking you speaking value-wise. points. Yeah, we 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 gave we gave some pretty solid uh, Super Bowl futures because both those teams are still alive in the playoffs and and I mean truthfully the 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 Bucks yeah the the Bucks Rams winner could easily make the Super Bowl and you're looking pretty good at, at, at anything in that plus five hundred or better territory so I I don't, I don't hate to pick one bit but it's gonna it's going to be an L of a ticket when the Rams win outright <laughs> this week oh, because we'll see. We'll, I said we'll so see about that one. We'll see about that. But um, uh, that's all we got for you guys on this week's edition of the podcast. Anything else you got for lo- for the people, Logan, before we get out of here? Uh, no, I am really excited for football. And if you are watching, you might notice my um, Muddy Bottoms Farm, the McDonald's uh, polo T-shirt. Yeah, it's my girlfriend's family. They own, they own a farm. Best sweet corn in all of western Pennsylvania. Go check them out. I think they have a Facebook page if you get the shape the chance. But they gave me this this free polo and they said, wear it on one of your podcasts. And I said, absolutely. So we have to set up a PO box or something for the calling our shot community. Cause I would love to get like, you know, cool shirts or 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 fan stuff eventually. Austin, I'm tasking you with that. Set up a PO box for us so we can receive. Uh, sure, PO. sure. I, I can be tasked with that. I would like to maybe give a spoiler to the people that are 50. 58 minutes now into the podcast. Maybe we'll have some merch coming on the way. Yeah. Uh, hopefully trying to launch at 25,000 subscribers. And maybe we'll launch that with the merch box, uh, with a PO box as well. And so yeah. if you want to, if you want to send us our own merch, sure, go for it. We'll give it away. Um, but that would be a waste of money. Um, but regardless, uh, we appreciate you guys for tuning into the podcast. This is our 21st episode. We're now legal, legally the drink. Um, 21 episodes deep. We appreciate you guys for always tuning in. If you have watched us late, why not go? You know, go to wherever you get the podcast. Give us a good rating there too. Um, we're cruising along, trying to get to 21,000 subscribers. So that's unreal. Have a ton of videos this weekend for the NFL slate. We appreciate you guys for tuning in. It's been Logan. It's been Austin, and we will catch you guys again next week. We're going to break down all these games next week. Man, oh man, divisional rounds here. Let's keep. Let's enjoy football while we got it because we only got two, three more weekends left of it. So let's enjoy it now. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. It's been Austin. It's been Logan. We'll catch you guys in the next one.